Oh, yeah. um, I bought this from Analog Wonderland. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? I, I, yeah, I can't, what does it say again? It says like a. Like a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw it the other yeah. day and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I, I saw went, that you did like a, an order but didn't buy any film. Yeah. Well, I thought yeah. the Wonder Box comes at the beginning of next month. I bought yeah. that book. Is it any good? Yeah. I mean, it's quite, it's nothing, there's nothing in there that you probably don't know, but it's but quite it's interesting to read about the stuff that you already know. And, yeah. and uh, it's just really nicely designed. It's really cool. Yeah, it is a nice looking book, isn't it? Yeah, it's really print like it's, it looks old in the uh, looks like something you'd found on your dad's shelf or something. Yeah. Um, which is quite cool. And I got that um squeegee thing so I can Oh uh, yeah. I'm I'm a bit bit more um uh confident in developing that role of yours. So it's yeah, yeah. gonna get watermarks on it. This uh, this is my little kit. Oh, that's good. Just class, and I've got one of those little pens. They're quite good. Yeah. Quite handy to kind of carry around with you, like double sided, kind of. Yeah. Quite handy. Oh, that's cool. I've got this as well. I don't know if you've seen these. No, what's that? Pixelator. Pixelator. It's like a. Uh... You um you put your films through it when you're like scanning. Well, when you're using your camera to take photos, I don't really know how it works. But you put it on top of your light box, and you. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you can. It's basically a negative holder. Yeah, yeah. But uh. But it lets you see it like a light box. It holds everything in place a bit more easily and it blocks out the light coming from around the side. And then you can just get a bit of glass and tape it up. Yeah. But um, I thought I'd get one of them. I don't know how to use it. So, yeah. But yeah. I can't, I can't even remember what, what photos I took on that roll that you're going to develop. Mm. Oh, actually, yeah, I can. There's, what, there's probably like five of my mate and I'm pretty sure he's got his ass out in one. I think I told you that, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, you did tell me that. I can't remember the other ones. Oh, the other ones are from when I met you. So it'll be a, yeah. there'll be a photo of you and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. looking weird going. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I went out last night with my friend to take some photos, drove to um, oh, that place that I took some like photos of that abandoned oh, Blizzard. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we saw like this field, like went out in like golden hour, like half seven last night. Mm. But we just, I only took one photo. Actually, I took two. I took one on 35 mil of this like pavilion next to a, like mm. a park, but it was like green, but it had like the shadow coming across it. So I'm hoping that mm. comes out quite nice. Mm. And then we just found this tree in the middle of a field. And I thought about you saying how analog land land like a single tree and stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it was so nice because the field, it was like a crop field. So it was already kind of like yellowy gold mm. and with the light shining on it, I'm hoping it comes out nice. Yeah. I, you know, I nearly texted you the other day, but when we were recording with, well, who was our last, last podcast? Was it Madison? Mm. I looked at you rather than her. Right. Because I could kind of tell when you had something to say or yeah. when you could kind of stop talking. Yeah. But putting that in a text saying, I just looked into your eyes while I while we were doing that. <laughs> but I found it a bit easier to like not interrupt because I feel like I'm bad at that, but then also to look when you had to say something in you know what I mean? Yeah, it's hard not to do, isn't it? Um, um, so what were we saying? We, we spoke to Madison. Yeah, maybe mention that she's from Brighton. Mention her YouTube. Brighton. She's got a YouTube channel. I think it's cool to mention that she doesn't work as a photographer, does she? She just is a hobbyist with it. Yeah. And she, right. she wants to learn. She, you can tell she wants to know about everything photography-based or film-based specifically. Yeah, like yeah. She's testing out roles and stuff, isn't she? Yeah, well, she's definitely more into film than... Yeah, and that's what her channel's all about. The last few videos have been, like, um, 
about top 10, top five, even black and white films. And then in this interview, she, uh, we talk about doing a top five color films, but since we yeah. recorded the interview and this coming out, uh, she's done the top five color films episode. So I'll yeah, I did notice she shared that. I actually watched it last night. Yeah, I'll put that in the description. What else do we talk about with her? We talk about, um, well, just the usual stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We talk about her being, well, yeah, going to uni, what she did when she lived in London. So what do we want to say about Front? What are we doing? That we've got the giveaway. Um, that's currently live yeah. and that'll be running for another week or so. So what's the uh, giveaway? What are we giving away? Wow. £25 voucher for Analog Wonderland. Mm. Show them the book. book. That could be one of the things you buy. Oh, right, that. The pin badge or... Yeah. Yeah. You can obviously, obviously, it's the place that we use to buy our film. Mm -hmm. um, and they've got everything. So, yeah, it's definitely a good prize, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and, and so two months of pro front pro when we launch um, yep. obviously it might be for a while yeah but yeah the winner will get two months free for that to try it out all the features yep. you get with pro i think it's worth mentioning as well that because i've noticed a lot of people that are entering the giveaway at the moment which is wicked by the way but it's uh, not everyone's registering to our mailing list now okay. it's awesome that we've got a lot of people already registered and that might just be the case um, but it is worth just reminding people to register to the mailing list as well as the other steps that are on the giveaway over on the Instagram account. Um, just because I was talking to a couple of people today, actually, and they they hadn't done it, and then they, they went and registered straight away. Um, but it's worth mentioning that the winner will be picked at first from the, pe the, the list of people that have registered, and then obviously will go to your account and yeah. everything like that. Yeah, cool. Um, Should okay. we do a quick... Should we do a quick hello for the start? So this is Madison. We spoke to her last week, weekend, about 10 days ago, by the time this comes out. And, um, and that's it. Do you not think we need to do, uh, hello everyone. Go Welcome on. to another podcast. Go on then. We'll just use that now. Hello. Hello. Bye. This is it. <laughs> Um, I do apologise for asking you this question, but have you ever been to Madison Beach? No. I actually was once asked if I was conceived there, but no, I've never been. <laughs> no. Because uh, I know um, some forward planning on my mum's part, but no, yeah, I've never yeah. been. <laughs> have, you got, yeah. have, you got have you got plans to go there? I did at one point, and I was like, is that too egotistical? So I yeah. sort of like muted those plans. <laughs> I see, you say that though. I don't know if you have you seen the video on Winona Ryder, like she's a photographer, and she yeah. did a whole book, a photography book, taking photos in the town of Winona. And I thought that was like well, she can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. We're pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, it's good yeah. enough for Winona. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think it was even cool, like Winona in Winona. So I don't know. Whatever. That's cool. It's yeah. Cool, like, um, I do apologise for asking that because I'm sure oh, it's been brought up before. Um, <laughs> Not really, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I actually set up a Twitter account a few years ago. Yeah. And I got all these complaints and they're like, not enough pillows and all this stuff. I thought, what the hell? And there's Madison Beach Hotel. And they kept <laughs> yeah. tagging me with all the hotel complaints. And I was like, that's enough Twitter for me. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, that's so good. That's cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, so... Tell us about yourself and like where, how, how you got started with photography and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, well, I'm 25 uh, and I'm based on the south coast of England. I started photography when I was 16, complete accident. I ticked the wrong class when I went to college. I went, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Wow. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Um, I was really sciencey, so I was ticking all the sciences. Thought I ticked physics, I didn't, I ticked photography. And I'm like, oh, you're going to have to go to the photography class and you can swap. I was like, whatever. Like, I'm not creative naturally whatsoever. So I went 
they're like, right, Pentax K1000, HP5, go out and shoot. And I was like, oh, okay, kind of like it. Came back in the dark room for an hour, and then, like, that was it for me. Like, That's amazing. everything shifted. Wow. Yeah, That's complete so accident. Good. But it is a kind of science, I guess, or there's a lot of science to it and math. Yeah, I think there is. I think that's why I was drawn to it. And like, naturally, I can't draw, I can't paint. Like, I'm really bad creatively, but I want to be creative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think yeah. photography kind of gave me that vessel of like, it can kind of cover up if you're really crap. Yeah. And then you can kind of <laughs> learn it from there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's how so I was. I you were doing, what was it, chemistry, biology, and then <laughs> photography rather than physics. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my mum was a bit shocked when I came home, but uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did you learn today? Well, actually, I made this picture. Yeah. That's what? Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So you decided to stick with photography at college then? Yeah, yeah. I was like, well, this is it. I dropped sciences. I was like, oh, no, really? I'm going to be a photographer. And my mum's like, oh my God, what have you done? <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I was in denial for a bit. Like, sports science was actually my thing. Um, so when it came to unis, I went around like Loughborough, I went around all like the big sports science ones. And then poor mum, I dragged her around like the whole country looking at sports science. And I was just like, it just didn't feel right. It just felt really forced. And I was like, I can't really see myself being happy. So I was like, oh, no, I'm going to do photography. Okay. Um, so yeah, then we went around and looked at more unis. <laughs> cool. And then you ended up going to uni for photography as well. Yeah, like that was a real conundrum for me because I personally, I think you really don't have to go to uni for photography like I think one of the best ways to learn is on the job um but I've always known I want to go into academia at some point and you have to have a degree so I was like might as well do it and something I love um yeah and then it just all kind of rolled on from there okay so where were you at uni uh so I went to Coventry for my BA mm. and then I went to UAL for my MA Oh, okay, awesome. I was, in one of your videos, you mentioned dragging your mum around when you le first learned about street photography. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how long after starting your photography degree was that? It took me a while. I was embarrassingly old, maybe 18, walking around London. And I watched all these videos. I'm like, do this, do this, do this. And I had to implement like every step for every photo. So it was so embarrassing. I was doing like, you know, leading lines, four thirds, trying out the golden spiral. I still don't understand it. Um, she was so embarrassed to be seen with me. But yeah, I was doing everything. <laughs> that's I think that's good though, that you had the attitude just to go out and do it. And like, yeah. I don't know, like I remember when I first started doing street photography, it was just like, go out, take a million photos on a digital camera and then hope that I had some, some ones that I liked in there. Mm. Or I'd go out with this, this specific goal of trying to take a certain photo, but it never kind of worked out. I always felt like I was trying to line up my photos properly or, like you said, find something with leading lines. And really, it was in my head, I liked the idea of just capturing capturing a certain moment that I'd seen, but then I didn't want to overthink it too much. But I, don't know, I feel like everyone has to go through that stage, don't they, before they kind of find, find what they yeah. want, I guess. So, so at that point, did your mum get it? No, no. <laughs> she, she's enthusiastic, yeah. she loves it and supports it, but she doesn't really like understand it. She'll go to all the galleries with me and stuff, hold my coat, but yeah. she like, yeah, it's not really her thing. Yeah. <laughs> when you go out and shoot like street photography with someone else who isn't a photographer, like, yeah, they, they either get a bit, of, they're not interested in what you're doing or they just get annoyed that you're kind of standing around waiting for something to happen for no reason. So yeah. he's taking a photo of that phone box again. Um, yeah. Again, I'm like, well, the light's better. Yeah. <laughs> you did that video about when you were working at the hotel and doing like some street photography stuff. So was that quite soon after yeah. uni? Yeah, that was straight. Yeah, that was straight off my BA, and I moved to London to live out the dream. Mm. Um, didn't obviously quite happen like that because you got to work. Um, but yeah, no, I that's when I probably like really fell in love with street photography. Uh, yeah. Because it wasn't my job, I was just doing it. Like I was working at a hotel, it was just my spare time. That's all I did was street photography. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. Mm. I liked it because I, I remember watching that video now. It's because I remember you saying that because you'd work different shifts, sometimes you'd see London at four o'clock in the morning, sometimes you'd see London at 8 p.m., sometimes you'd see it at you know, 11 in the morning, whatever it was, and you, get, you got to see it at different times. So 
I think that's quite cool because, you know, me, I'm effectively a, a nine to five worker. So I have to kind of plan a lot more if I want to go out at certain times. But that, that's yeah. quite cool. And, and yeah, that, at the time I was like, oh, you know, going from one shift to the other. But actually, in hindsight, it was really good. Was that the video where you started walking to work? To, yeah. To, yeah, I remember yeah, and it made me walk. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it gives you a really good uh, like opportunity, like you say, to take photos of things that you wouldn't necessarily see otherwise, or um, to kind of appreciate the uh, surroundings of what you've got to go and explore. And like where I live now, I live in a village, and there's little to. Once you've lived here for a little while, there's not really a lot to go and shoot. And I think when I lived in London, I didn't appreciate it enough. I used to go out and shoot stuff on the street, but I didn't really understand that uh, what street photography was at that time. So I just used to kind of go out and take a few pictures and didn't really like, appreciate it enough. And I'd walk around thinking, oh, there's nothing to take photos of here. But looking back, I'm like, I didn't really know like what I was looking for. Um, and yeah massively underappreciated everything that was literally on my doorstep I think a lot of people go through that and you were speaking about like Sean Tucker I think in your last video mm. um and just by seeing like the way you know you went through that phase of the light and stuff even if you see that then you're like oh, okay that's what you could do um yeah. sometimes you just need a little glimpse of something yeah yeah and that was it well I used to work in, in Wandsworth which is where he lives and when I used to work there I was like oh, there's nothing around here. And then I've been back there since, and you're like, what, what, <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> and, yeah, you see his stuff that he does there, and you're like, wow, there's just everything. It's, um, yeah, total missed opportunity. But there you it go. what you're inspired by at the time as well, though, doesn't it? Because, you know, like you said, you, you don't see anything there, but then if you've, you know, if you've been looking into photographers that are taking photos of, light hitting windows for argument's sake you'll look at it in a completely different way won't you when really you're thinking oh i want to catch someone you know crowds of people i don't know yeah, it on yeah. The vibe. it's a weird thing as well because sometimes i see people's work that's like it's a photo of a house but because that house is like in france or mexico or wherever it looks different to what i see every day and i think it looks amazing and it's really interesting and it's actually just a photo of some random house somewhere. So I, I have started doing that, although it's a bit dodgy when you live in a little village, just stopping outside <laughs> someone's house. <laughs> but I've got a couple of pictures that like, I'm like, I don't think it's interesting because I see that house every time I go out for a walk, but then you kind of try and like be a bit more removed from it and um, kind of, yeah, see it through someone else's eyes or whatever, but it's hard to do. Yeah, it's like when you go traveling, like everything seems amazing and different, but that's just someone else's hometown. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I do it all the same, like with Brighton. Like I'm like, I've been there, been there. So like, it is hard to get out of that mindset. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So how have you found like living in Brighton compared to London in terms of photography? Like street photography, like I didn't do it for like two years when I moved mm. back to Brighton. I just like, I wasn't inspired. Like I grew up here, so... I've walked like all the streets a million times. It's a big place, but it's not huge. Um, so that's when I just tried to like start looking for different things. I started shooting street photography on film, which mm -hmm. I didn't really do too much in London, mm. um, just because it's so expensive. Uh, and street photography, you just get through the rolls. Um, so yeah, I just tried to take a different approach. And also I just didn't shoot for a while. <laughs> like sometimes you just need a bit of a break. Um, yeah. And then I went back into it with like, yeah, way more enthusiastic. Yeah. yeah. I think that is true. I, I, I messaged Luke last weekend because I managed to go to um, like this kind of shopping complex near us, um, and I haven't shot street photography since before the like the pandemic, since we like since the first lockdown because I've just been working from home. And I went there the other day because they've got a couple of shops that are open there, and there must have been about two hundred people there, which isn't a huge amount. But I walked around with my camera. And I realised how much I'd missed it. But yeah. I didn't think I'd missed it because I was like, you know, I've been trying to use use this time to concentrate on more like landscape photography or doing more photography just when I'm going out doing dog walks or whatever it might be. But there was way less people. I, I wouldn't class it as street photography. And I remember I messaged Luke and I was like, 
I feel like I'm doing street photography again. I've got such a yeah. buzz. Sometimes you need to give yourself a break, don't you? Mm. Yeah, I love that buzz though. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you forget that you do get a buzz from it though. Yeah. When you don't do it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Finding those little spots as well, like a shopping village, I think you would you call it that? Or it's basically like a new kind of complex where there's a car park in the middle and there's shops around the outside. And because it's all new, everything's just kind of blocky and square and the walls are quite plain, but it makes it really interesting for street photography because you get lots of shadows and lines and a few people walking around and stuff like that. Yeah, it so is so sharp shadows, don't you? It's quite handy like now from again like from where I live I know a lot of the people so it's a bit weird to go out like taking photos yeah. of people. <laughs> but it means when I go to somewhere like that I've always got my camera with me I just get out and I don't worry about the fact that there's only like a few dozen people around because I don't know them and it doesn't really matter and I don't care what they think I might not be taking photos of them but I don't I don't worry about what they're thinking because that's that was always my problem with doing street photography at first I'm like what were you saying somebody might be looking at you thinking why are you taking a photo of that like phone box or um you know I was taking a photo of a broken cigarette on the floor the other day because I thought it looked kind of interesting and um my son was like what are you doing <laughs> why why are you taking a photo of that and I was like Ah, it's interesting. You'll understand one day, son. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of yeah, finding those little spots are quite good at the moment where you can where you can go out. But yeah, it's hard to it's hard to get inspired, I guess, uh, at the moment by yeah, not being able to go too far away from your from your front door. Yeah. And yeah. I had a weird one when I was at uni we did a lecture on the street photography. And like, I don't know if I'm super naive, but when I was like 18, 19, I just didn't really think about it. And then like, when you start overthinking and I was like, is this right? Should I be getting permission beforehand? And then I was like, it's not really street photography, it's stage photography. And like, so that got me thinking. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just about being sensible. Um, just, you know, not taking it too far. We spoke about this, not, not on a podcast or anything, but there's just a level of respect, isn't there? But kind of at the same time rules are kind of made to be broken in some respects especially with like street photography it's the way you look at it isn't it mm. and sometimes you see something you're like well i have to capture that yeah. moment i don't care how it comes out but i'll capture that moment but then in other sense like i don't know I, i'm not the sort of person who go and take a picture <laughs> of someone's face yeah but there's people that do it and they get great results and i'm sure they've never had any conflict with it at all but yeah i guess yeah i wrote good. an essay on charlie Kwai. do you know charlie Kwai? he's a really good photographer um Oh. And he does uh, flash street photography portraiture. And um, oh. I done an essay on basically like, if he was just flashing it in people's faces without a camera, would it be okay? Yeah. Or does a camera make it okay? Um, and right. I've actually like never really done flash when it comes to street portraiture because I'm just like, oh. No, yeah. no. no I don't. there's no way of hiding yourself then, is there? Yeah, no, just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I don't want to be sneaky about it. If I'm going to do street photography, I'm not like hiding it, my camera away. Like I'm not, yeah. 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 And it's yeah. like that um, Bruce Gilden, the flash stuff he does. I'm not a fan. I think it's like really exploitative and weird. And it's easy to take a photo of somebody close up and then edit it. So that you, you know, make all the lines and wrinkles like really accentuated and make almost these kind of like grotesque portraits of people. And I don't feel like he's doing it with their explicit consent and also saw some pictures of him well one picture that he had taken of uh somebody asleep through a car window and he was I think a, he was in the army or something like that and I'm just like I think that's a really weird thing to do and I read an yeah, old yeah. interview with him where he'd said that's where he draws the line he'd never take a photo of somebody asleep and this was like a recent picture and I commented on it on Instagram saying that and they deleted the comment i was like uh, that's a really strange thing to do nothing screams guilty like a deleted instagram comment <laughs> yeah yeah i'm like yeah. get rid of the post <laughs> yeah it's a weird one yeah i don't i used yeah. to really like I've it i've seen a few videos of him shooting as well yeah and like so many times people going no 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 i don't want a photo no leave me alone and still he doesn't it's like yeah there's I've no content involved like, 
Yeah, it's like I've heard him described as a bully with a camera. When I was younger, I thought he was great. And now I'm a bit like, it just seems mean and it seems aggressive and unnecessary and stuff like that. But there you go. How, how, how did you get into YouTube? What, what, when was it you were like, yeah, I'm going to have a YouTube channel now? That was, uh, <laughs> so I moved to Bangladesh. Um, and when we were out there, there was about 10 of us working. And we had no Wi-Fi, no internet for the whole time. And so like, I didn't prepare whatsoever. My friend downloaded like Netflix, downloaded loads of stuff and YouTube. And bearing in mind, this was like 2017. I'd never really watched YouTube, never really got into it. Um, and she showed me Casey Neistat, like a lot of people, I think. I've never heard of him, never seen his videos before. And I was like, oh, this is what people do. Like, oh, you can just upload your own videos. She was like, yeah. I was this like, is okay. a with a <laughs> yeah. Literally, I've been living under a rock and I was like, oh, that's cool. Okay. Thought nothing of it. And then I came back and so I had no job, literally no money. And I was like, I really don't know what I want to do. Like, I knew I wanted to do an MA, but I was like, I don't know if I'm ready. So I was like, right, while I'm sort of in this limbo, I'll just aim to make a video a week and I'll just do it about film photography because I enjoy doing it. And yeah, it could just kind of start from there. There was no plan to continue doing it it was just like an in-between stage and then yeah I just really loved it and the community is really good three years later still making videos yeah (laughs) I was saying to Luke because it's it's amazing that you've got the community that you've managed to build around that but again I I still think even like today there's not many people that really do it well even though it's there's kind of been like a boom not just with photography but with certainly with YouTube do you know I mean people people starting their own vlog accounts everywhere um but yeah i think it's great that you've managed to build a community but i I really i really like the videos just because i feel like they're so relatable they're not too um i hope you don't mind me saying but they're not too you know extravagant it's not like (laughs) they're not some high end yeah (laughs) or do you know what i mean it's just they're relatable because i feel like especially maybe maybe more so because it's in the uk um, I can just see myself being there and trying the things that you're doing and you just happen to be documented as well. And I, I certainly think that that must be something that appeals to to the followers and fans that you've got. Yeah, I don't know. I've never really thought about it, to be honest. I just make videos that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, and the community has like, been insane and like the best thing about doing YouTube. Um, yeah, but it's never going to be like some high-end production. I just talk about what I like or what I'm shooting. I try not to be too gear-centric because I think there is an element of like, oh x is shooting this i need to get this camera oh now they're shooting this i need to get this camera mm. and it's like that's not true as long as you enjoy it that's all that matters yeah yeah well, that, i was gonna i was gonna actually I, i've actually worked that down to ask you about because the cameras and the, the film stocks that you shoot and stuff when i watch your videos i know for a fact that i could probably go out and find that camera and probably be able to afford it as well it's not like oh like there's a twelve thousand pound like a, I, I, you know, that puts me off watching it straight away because I know that I haven't got twelve thousand yeah. pounds to drop. The camera, but I know that when I watch your videos, I can relate to it because of where you are, and also the cameras you use. There's, it's probably easier to get hold of or there's something similar within a decent price range, especially the kind of the review videos that you do on on certain cameras and stuff. Yeah, I just don't, especially people getting into photography, and a lot of people now use YouTube to get into photography and film. I don't want them to just be face. I mean, those videos are great, Leicas and Mamiya 7s and all that. And I love those cameras, but they're just not accessible, especially when you're first starting out. And I don't want to put people off. We actually asked a question on our Instagram, didn't we, about tips for beginner photographers and the amount of people that we had just saying, just go out and shoot, you know, especially if you want to get into like film photography, you can go to a charity shop and pick up a decent camera, whack it in there, and you'll have just as much fun. You don't have to feel like you have to save up for a year to, to get a camera that you don't know how to use. Just just go and grab one, you know, that it's easily enough accessible. You can get loads of like, I've seen the, well, what am I saying? The price of point and shoot cameras kind of going up and up, like Pentax SVO range and stuff like that, that I kind of keep an eye out for just to, not that I necessarily want to buy them, I'm just like looking at them. But I almost feel more recently, like I have got a couple and every time I shoot them, I'm like, what's the point? I might as well just be shooting on digital because you're not doing anything. You're just pointing the camera at something. And then 
it doesn't feel the same as when you kind of set you you know you expose the photo yourself but i don't know if that's just me or no i feel like you get a look a certain look back when you've got a point and shoot camera though well kind of slightly out of focus or overexposed yeah i don't know i just feel like you can clearly tell the difference between a film photo and a digital photo in in every in every way so i feel like even yeah. I, I get what you're saying about the feels less almost, satisfying yeah but then when you get the results back I don't know, maybe it's the build-up of waiting to get the photos back and I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, it was really misty here the other day and I had some film left in a SVO and went outside to try and shoot it and it wouldn't fire because it couldn't like find a, it couldn't focus. And I was like, this is terrible. And then <laughs> it managed to get it to go off once and it was all out of focus. So but that's the fun of it. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Digital is too reliable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I wish I'd just had it in a little like rangefinder with no battery. With yeah. Set the focus and stuff like that. I've been trying to take out of focus photos on purpose. Um, I've got this like look in my head of what it will look like. I haven't been able to actually achieve it yet. They just look like crap out of focus <laughs> pictures. But, when I get there one day, I think I need more mist or something. So I don't know. It's not the right time of year to be doing it. But what's your go-to camera at the moment? So like when you're reviewing one in that kind of way, have you got a favourite camera that you, you just go to use from a day-to-day -day purpose? Honestly, not really. Um, if it was going to be point and shoot. Um, so I've got my Mew 2 and a Polaroid 35mm uh, 399 charity shop camera. I awesome. go for that one every time. Mm like the Mew 2 barely gets a look in yeah so it just shows you like you really don't need a super expensive camera I just enjoy I mean the images aren't a shop I just enjoy shooting it so much more um yeah. and I do like the aesthetic of point and shoot for like you know put a camera in your pocket day-to-day -day life to be honest I like my Pentax K1000 because I've shot so many different 35mm cameras but with that one I know exactly what it can do and so when I'm shooting loads of different films, like I know what's the film, what's the camera, and I just, I don't know. It's a bit sentimental as well because it was the first camera I ever shot. Nice. Um, yeah, and then 120, like I really like the RZ. I don't have one though. I do like the RB as well, but I'm just like too weak to carry it around. <laughs> like, I've already said this, but I've literally just bought the RB. And it's it's, it's so heavy. <laughs> like, yeah, I just need to work out and then I'll get a medium format. Yeah. What you said, especially when you started, you said about that first camera that you got. If you know it like the back of your hand, you can kind of predict what the results are going to be like when you go out. So you know you're not. It's not so much of a risk, if you know what I mean. Especially if yeah, I mean if it's if it's project work, I shoot differently. But when it's just me out and about shooting, then like I want a camera I know. I don't want to overthink it. Like I want to have fun with it. Yeah. So yeah, my Pentax is just like it's just there the whole time. You did the video recently about the black and white film and you mentioned um, like doing a colour film version of it. So I was interested in like, because I've been trying to try out loads of different colour films and stuff recently. Like, so is there anything that you've particularly been using that you would like to see uh, come into that like top five colour film? What hey. I'm so stereotypical, but Lomo 800. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never shot it until very recently. And I was like, oh, I don't really get the hype wherever I shot it. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. get it. Um, yeah. Like, I really don't think you have to shoot all these expensive, like, cine stills, Lomo 800, like, to get good colour photos. Not at all. You can go with gold or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I do like Lomo 800 a lot. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realise it was such a, like, sought after, sells out all the time everywhere. When I went to the photography show the NEC like two years ago they had a stand there and I just bought I was like I'll just buy some film it's a bit cheaper than buying it online so I bought loads of rolls of that of the 800 and then really liked it and then have since tried to buy it again and it's just it's always sold out everywhere um, yeah I had no idea yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I shot filmography like it was my first film I ever shot was filmography film Okay. color film but for the longest time i thought they were just like a novelty film like the loma chromes like i didn't realize they actually produced like decent normal color films until 800 yeah mm. yeah it is good isn't it I, I shot one recently 
not a lomography film this company called film never die and i think it was called kiro 400 or something like that and it's only um i've only just got it back and again it's sold you can buy it directly from them but they're in australia but um i can't find it is it, it good i've got a roll but i've not shot it yet it's really nice yeah yeah okay. it's like really bright almost has that kind of like velvia um kind of yeah like really bright blues the sky looks amazing in it um and i shot some of it just as the sun was going down and kind of the light reflecting off this building it looks really really nice um it is only 27 exposures which i didn't realize and i just i almost broke it trying to I thought my <laughs> <laughs> I I had them, had them there, and then it goes past 24 so I'm like okay obviously it's 30 yeah I'm like trying to like wind the thing on. Uh, yeah it's like when I tried the new Poundland film oh what a mistake that was only 10 frames which is bizarre anyway yeah and then I got to like five and that was it like yeah. I couldn't wind on anymore is that still available at the moment? I don't, I've not seen it. Maybe it was my review, but I've not seen it. I've never seen it years ago, but I don't think I've ever gotten it. But I remember it being oh. a big thing for a while, wasn't it? Like people yeah. trying to get on it, and then I've never seen it since. Yeah, I'd, I'd never heard about it until the other week, until I saw you mention it in a video and was mm. like, oh, okay. But yeah, what's the point, I guess, if you're only. Yeah, there? a pound for 10 frames, but you get six. Like, no. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> it might be yeah might as well buy portrait <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so the first one is cine still really like it but overrated yeah yeah that's i think that's my opinion of it like it is cool but it's not as it's pretty like one trick pony kind of thing i guess yeah so the second one is Leica just in general, as a film, you know, film photography? Oh, where do I sit with this? <laughs> <laughs> so, have you ever shot with a... See, with a I've M? never shot... No, I've never shot with a Leica M at all. Okay. Um, so, I'll just put the cats amongst the pigeons. I'll say overrated. Okay. I, I think that's what we should do, have a little subsection of this, was have you shot a Leica... Um, yeah. whatever like a little before. caveat so I don't get all the DMs mm. like yeah. yeah I had one question the poster that said about being a woman working in a creative art yeah like that. I keep I kept trying to read it but I can't read it <laughs> oh, I'll put it back up if you I got need it to why I want to up here. maybe I'll put it back up yeah yeah um yeah, it's by the Gorilla Girls. Um, yeah, yeah. They're really good. They campaign for like women's rights and being equal within the art industry. Okay. And yeah, it's obviously something very important to me. Um, yeah, 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 it's just a sarcastic poster. I got an exhibition and I thought, oh yeah, that'll do for the video. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. I thought, um, I kind of I was trying to read it, like I say, and then yeah, I thought, oh, it's something like, I want to buy it for my daughter or something to put it in her room, just like. Yeah, no, it's really cool. And like, I just put it up there because I was like, oh, I don't know what to put up. It's a bit mm. of a blank wall. The yeah. amount of messages I get like, where did you get it from? What does it say? And where, mm. where's it gone? I took it down for one video. Where's it gone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's great. Um, but yeah, maybe we can, f if, yeah, send me a link or I'll- Yeah, I'll send you a link. There. Yeah, they're it's really, really cool. So the other thing I wanted to ask you about and I don't know actually if there is a question in here. It may just be like, let's talk about it. Was the last frame of the role, which I really liked as a concept, because obviously first of the role is the thing that you see all the time on Instagram. I really liked the thought that you put into that, what that last frame of the role means and whether it's just like a self-portrait or you're just trying to fire off a few shots before you take it into a lab to be developed or you try out something a little bit different um but I suppose like is that something that you kind of stumbled across when you were just like looking back through prints and you were seeing like oh the, that last frame is always quite interesting or is it something that you kind of actively thought about no it's never yeah. been like an intentional thing I was just looking through 
I was going to say my archive, but just like all my old negatives in lockdown. Mm. And I just kind of saw a pattern and I was like, there's loads of like either self-portraits, which I don't do very often, or just like funny shots of my friends, like, you know, like, oh my God, I need to get it to the lab. Can I just take a random photo? Mm. Um, and a lot of the last ones are like some of my favorites. They're not going to be like project worthy, but mm. just for like capturing a personal snapshot or documenting my friends. Yeah, I just saw a pattern. I thought, oh, this is interesting. And then I spoke to Vince, Vincent Perry about it, um, who's like an awesome creator. And he was like, no, I've been having the same thoughts. So yeah, we spoke about it and I was like, yeah, I'm going to put a video together about it. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I, met, I remember one of the first times me and you spoke, Luke, I commented on a photo that you posted and you said it was the last roll of a film. And in my head, I'm like, the last roll, I kind of feel like it's a wasted photo a lot of the time because you're like, ah, oh, I've captured what I've wanted to capture. I better just fire it quick. And it's always so different from the rest of the world. So that's what we were talking about. It. That's what we really liked about the concept of it. Yeah, yeah. I often find that my last one isn't the last one because it still winds on for a couple more shots. <laughs> yeah. Even in even in the SPO, sometimes you get like 37, 38. Yeah, shots and you've just back. taken like a random shot of your feet and you're like, oh, I've still got two left. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's quite annoying. I'm guessing this didn't work with the Power Man role, though. You know, we've got a yeah, shot. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, um, yeah, especially with, like, I've got these like cheap little range finders and they just it seem to, I don't know, they, I get like 38, 39 shots out of them sometimes. Um, but it is a really cool concept and like, I don't know, it deserves its own Instagram account or a hashtag. Not a bad ready. idea, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it. But it's well, quite the right. role brought to you by Madison Beach. Cool. Yeah. But it's hard to prove, really. Like, it's the, like, first of the freight, like, first of the role is so obvious normally if you've got light leaks or whatever. Mm. You Maybe you've got to take a photo. Maybe you've got to take a photo <laughs> of the end of the, the negative. Yeah. One. I need proof. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but yeah I, I guess it's a hard one. Yeah, that's kind of like the film photo challenge where it was like to shoot the entire role and submit the entire role because, yeah, people could just cheat if they're scanning them in themselves or... Um, yeah. Yeah, you've got to find a way to prove it, but... Did, yeah, did you do that in the end, Luke? Because I remember, I remember sending Luke the link to your video of that, yeah. Madison. And Luke was like, yeah, this, what we were talking about, we were saying how great an idea. And I was like, I'm way too scared to commit to doing a whole role. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I don't, yeah. did, you, did you do it then? No, I had two ideas and did none of them. Um, so I kind of, first of all, thought I'll just go out and shoot a role um, in the street and just try and make every shot count and spend a few hours and just submit a role of what I'm hoping are going to be really good shots. And then I thought, I'm too nervous to do that because, I, I don't know, I, you, you do it so many times, you get a role developed and you're like, oh, well, that was a waste of time and money. Maybe three, uh, good, ones. Maybe three good ones, that's yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then I thought, um, I'll do a, like a story and I was going to do it with, I, I'm giving away a, a, what I think is quite a good idea, but like, try and shoot a story in 36 frames but like have it in say three or four parts and shoot like a black frame in the mid in between them all to kind of set these kind of sections of this story so when you're looking at the whole role like every five or six photos there's one where I've just like kept the lens cap on or whatever and um and then I couldn't couldn't think of a story <laughs> so I was like oh and then I realized that would have been really cool. Yeah, I quite liked the idea, but then I thought, um, I overthought it for too long, and then I realized it was the end of the month and didn't have time to do it. So, uh, yeah, just totally messed Maybe up. Maybe we should set this challenge. Maybe we should set this challenge to to our ambassadors of our, our front and uh, get them to see what they can come out with. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a two year time frame. It, so. When it's film, you need two years. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. A good idea. Okay. yeah, I kind of, it was a hard thing to kind of, once I worked it out in my head, I was like, oh, it's not, yeah, there's no time to do it now. So just wait for the next one. Or Yeah, I think we're going to do another one um, and get some like UK labs on board, which I think will be better because it'll be cheaper. Awesome. So yeah. I think take part yeah. in the UK. So I think that's a good, but no, it's a really good idea. Um, I think we're judging them next week. So I'm interested yeah. to see 
Yeah, okay, yeah. Done. So, um, so the first question is about um, is there then might not be anybody, but who do you think <laughs> is the hardest working photographer? Today? And you can say yourself. We, we... Oh no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Hardest working. I was going to go with a bit of a deep answer. Mm. Um, I think hardest working is anyone who's graduating this year, last year, 18 year olds who are trying to get into the industry. Yeah. Like it is the hard, it's always hard, but it's the hardest time to get your foot in the door right now. Mm, so I yeah. think the people who are working like normal nine to fives and trying to get into the industry, they're the hardest working. Yeah, yeah that's a nice shout yeah, out. I, agree. I completely agree with that. Yeah, it could be really cutthroat as well, especially at the beginning. And like now, so much funding's been cut and yeah, it's really difficult. And also so demoralizing. Like having your graduate exhibition or whatever, like online and then trying to talk to people, it, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah, that's rough, isn't it? Really horrible. So next question was, what is your favorite all-time photographer? If you have one. Okay. Going back, Elliot Erwitt classic I just love his work mm -hmm. um current day Laura Panic. I really love her portraits mm -hmm. she's yeah she's a big inspiration for me yeah cool and then the last well one of the last questions not photography related um so you can answer this however you want three favorite albums but it can be all time or just recently this is going to show me in such a bad light <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it's not. No, no. <laughs> oh no, no. When you say albums, is in music, yeah. I yeah. when I listen to music, it's because the radio's on in the background. That is it's my. <laughs> okay, so, so you're... if you're going to press me, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. But S Club Seven was the soundtrack <laughs> to my childhood. <laughs> Very. And like, so yeah, S Club Seven for mm -hmm. everything. Um, Celeste, I really like at the moment. She's up and coming. Um, I think she won a Brit Award for like best breakthrough. Um, and we actually went to primary school together. So it's really oh. cool to see what she's oh, doing. Awesome. That's she, cool. Yeah, she's incredibly talented. Yeah. Um, and I like uh, Tom Grenham. He's quite good. But he's Northampton, isn't he? Is he? Is it? Mm. We'll recognise that. Oh, well, I know that a few people from Northampton who play in his band. I don't know if he's from Northampton. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. But yeah, that is like my music knowledge. S Club Seven. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm the worst person to ask about music. No, no, no. You're moving in theme tune, is it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Reach. yeah. All the '90s classics as well. Yeah, and S Club. Yeah. Do you know what? But there's no bad answer to that. Like, there's. Have you seen? There's a film called Girlhood. I think oh, I can't remember who it's directed by. It's a French film, and in that film there's a scene where these girls go and get uh they want to go on a night out but they're too young they're sort of like 15 16 or whatever and they they just rent a hotel room for the night and listen to rihanna and it's just this amazing scene of them dancing around the room to uh diamonds by rihanna and it's just it's awesome and i'm like if you're snobbish about pop music like i think if you saw that film you like you couldn't help but change your opinion because what those songs like mean to those girls is it's like it's everything and I'm like I don't know how you could watch something like that and be like uh you know take that away from somebody by being like oh it's just pop music or whatever so yeah no no wrong answers when it comes to that <laughs> um and then the last one yeah so top three films as in movies um or again three yeah, most portrait um yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the documentary <laughs> they did yeah. have a tv show but um oh, they did, didn't they? <laughs> films uh book smart i'm a big fan of mm. um whiplash yeah. and oh, which way is the front line uh the tim Heverington documentary is oh, awesome yeah oh. it's really cool I've never heard of that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his work. Um, yeah, but the documentary really does him justice. So yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll check that out. Yeah. We tend to always ask if, if there's anything you want to um, leave with. Is there a leaving message you want to give to any, you know, shout any products, you, projects you're working on, or 
motivational yeah, I am... speech. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm, the, I'm the last person to be motivational. <laughs> um, I am working on a project at the moment, mm. um, which is due to be released hopefully in June. It's something completely different. It's not completely a photography project. It's like photography, travel, storytelling kind of thing, website. Awesome. I don't really know what it is yet, but it's sort of working towards something. Um, yeah, and I've never done something like this before. So it feels, I don't know, it probably feels a bit like you guys, that like you're a bit vulnerable, like putting it out to the world and being like, oh. Yeah. Um, yeah we so didn't realize how hard it would be because we're like, oh, yeah, this is our idea. We'll, we'll have it out by Monday next week. And then we <laughs> didn't realize how hard it was or how, how challenging it would be. Yeah, it takes me like an hour to remember my password for like my domain. So I was like, oh, it's going to take me a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool though. But obviously you don't want to give too much away at the moment, but that's exciting that you're still setting yourself challenges and goals to achieve like new things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's important, especially with like lockdown and stuff. Like you just get stuck in a rut. So I was like, okay, let me find something I'm passionate about and actually do something about it. And if it fails, like it gave me something to do for a few months. So Yeah, I yeah. think you always learn from those kind of things as well. Yeah, definitely.